Welcome back to Flourish Field and um, in today's video we are going to improve on the dice game. So this is a part two of the dice game. Okay. Now uh, I want to teach this concept of programming in, in a way that you would actually follow along with me. You will see how um, programmers you know go through decision making processes. It's not like as if it's the easy way out. Um, you would see how we make our decisions and then uh, you'll be able to learn how to think like a programmer. Now, the purpose of this video is for you to, you know, learn how to think like a programmer, how, to, how we actually, you know, solve problems. So it might take a while, but really I want you to follow me step by step and then, you know, try to um, figure out ways out in solving your problems. So, all right, now let's start. Now, what we want to do today is to improve on the code. All right, right now I wrote a code that whenever I click on it, uh, lets the dice keep changing. Okay, uh, we don't want that. We are not in control of what we are doing. So what I, what I want to do is I want to create um, a sprite, kind of like a button that will actually trigger that will trigger uh, the rolling of the dice. So how do we do that? You just come to uh, choose a sprite. You click on choose a sprite, and then um, you select the button so that's the first thing we do select the button all right so we should have that right there and then okay here we go so that's the first button now this button would actually trigger the movement of the two dice that's that's what we're looking at just like we have right here so that when we click on it it triggers the movement of the two dice so just hold on while we go so I click on that again and um, I choose the same button um, and then I select the same button all right so that's it so we have two buttons now to specify if it is player one or player two we need to you know add some text we need to add some text to it all right so how do we do that you come to costume normal and then you click on text right and then you click inside now you select player oh now the color is not something we want so we want it to be white you just drag to the stream and also drag to the stream in, and then now we have a white color uh -huh. so you, talk, you can type player player one now this is what we're looking out for so you can select the select button and then you know drag it down so I can be centralized. Now that's player one. Now you click on the same one, the second button, and then you click on text. You click right there. You see what I'm doing? And then you type what? Player two. Now that's it. Now um, this is what we're talking about. So we've been able to design the player one and the player two, right? So if I were you, I would still want to do something. Um, let's just click on this right here okay it's been grouped already okay so that's it so we have sprite one and sprite two such that when i click on this it moves together with player one so it's been automatically grouped so we have player one the button for player one and the button for player two can you see that all right. So another thing that I want us to do is uh, we we need a back we need a background that would you know resonate with what we have right here. So we need a background that would you know carry the information of what we have. So we come right here to background, and then we select the background. So we want something plain so that we can actually edit. So we are going to pick uh, blue sky. Now on this blue sky, can you see right now we have blue sky? Uh, we need to design some text on it so that we can have, you know, some information. Okay, just like we had right here. Information about. So how do we do that? We come to text. We change the text color to something that would blend with the blue sky. All right. So I think I'm, I'll just go with this. Can you see that? And then I select text. So now I can type and say what um, you, you could also select the font family um, 
I, I always use marker because it's quite bold and something people can see. So uh, then I can write um, dice game, dice game, you see, dice game by, you can put your name this time around, but I'm still going to use flourish field, flourish field, and then I press enter. Then I give a bit of information by saying what um, the players, the players, sorry, I wrote players, the players, no, the players have three attempts. Oops. Attempt each. So we could actually centralize this by clicking on that. All right, so so I could actually bring that up, you know, so that we could. Uh oh, no, that's not what we're talking about. No, it's possible you you know get something like this. Just ensure that everything is being blocked out. All right, so you could drag this down below, and then it's get back to your backdrop so um, this is already looking like what we have right here if you can see or even better but now another thing we need to do is uh, we need we need to you know create something that will keep the scores for our users if you have been following our tutorials you should have an idea of the concept that we can use to keep our scores can you pause the video and just make a guess? All right. You can pause the video right now and make a guess. All right. Welcome back. If you said variable, that we are supposed to create a variable to keep the scores for the players, you are very correct. You know, that's, the, that's the move. And that's what I'm talking to you about. Like, you know, you having, you know, this problem solving mindset. Uh, in creating wonderful apps. So we need to create variables that will keep the scores for the first player and the second player. Remember that we need to keep the scores after we click. This is what we want to achieve. That when we click on this button, the two dice will roll. will change numbers. And whatever number we have, for example, 43, will be kept in variable player 1. All right, so now let's do that. So how do we create a variable? Let's delete this one right here. How do we create a variable? Now, how to create a variable? We come back to code. Now, because we want the variable to be universal, that is, we want, we don't want we don't want to limit the variable to just you know um, the first sprite or the second sprite or the third sprite or the fourth sprite. So we just create a variable. Just come to variables, click on variable, and then you say make a variable. Now this time around, we're going to call it. Uh, player one that's the scores for player one and then you click on OK that's we're already building up one after the other and then you go again variables and then you click on make a variable and then you call this one what's player two and then you click on OK now we have been able to create a variable but now we've not even done any programming I hope you're following we have not done any programming all we have just done is to you know set up um, our game for something like this. You can see it's already looking like what we have right here. So that when you click on um, player one, it rolls and then it gives you. You see, and then that's all. All right. So the first thing we need to achieve right now is that when we click on flag, we want everything to show. Like we want all the sprites to show. All right. So now, how do we do that? All right. Let's get back to what we have. All right, you know what? I think I'm going to continue that in the next video. But I hope by now you understand what we've done. Um, I hope you understand how to, you know, design everything that you need from the background, from the backdrop to the buttons, to everything that you have seen right now. So if you do have any question, um, I, I would like you to drop your comments below and then ensure that you subscribe and tell your friends about this lovely channel. In the next video, I am going to show you how to, you know, link uh, the button to the dice and then from the dice to the variables that we created right here, which is the players. Okay. All right. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. Please drop your comment.
ensure that you tell your friends about this. Thank you.